So, welcome back. Today we have the first of a few demos that we're going to get over the winter time. I mentioned this before, bale shears are the ones we're talking about. And we're going to be trying a few different ones over the next few months. It's just something I'm interested in myself to see how they all perform against each other. And you guys get to see them as well before maybe you go out and purchase one for yourself. So the guy is on his way here now with a jeep and trailer with the first one that's coming for the day. So it's absolutely teeming outside and it's given this all day long. So, But that's just our typical Irish weather. I'm going to go down now and we're going to lift this machine off the trailer from. We're going to bring it back down here to hopefully we can stand under a bit of cover somewhere and just show you exactly what it is. So here with Joe from Keltech and he is after dropping us down our, well I suppose you can explain exactly what it is. It's a uh, Keltech uh, bale slice, um, ideally suited for round bales over diet feeding, feeding of all uh, types of round bales in any situation in shed or outside in round feeders or anything like that. The only one that's on the market that slices from the bottom up. Uh, Adrian gave us the opportunity to leave the slice here for a try and let him uh, either praise it or give uh, me honest opinion on it. Your honest opinion, <laughs> and not be too bad about it. Yeah. And uh, try yeah. to test it yeah. and uh, give us a bit of feedback on it and see how you enjoy it. I will do. Before I let Joe go away here, where did you come from this morning? Came from Kilkenny this morning. I'm based in Kilkenny, but our company is in Limerick. Yeah. We're operating uh, for the, over 30 years now. I'm the wrong road sales, but I do about 2,000 miles a week. So I'm all over the country yeah, yeah, yeah. and um, yeah, we enjoy what we do. We, we do everything mostly from slurry equipment right down to tree shears, concrete buckets, bale slices, our biggest seller, uh, bale chasers, every kind of stuff, www.keltech.ie. You'll see everything you need to see. Well, I know very little about these bale shears and the reason that um, I think it was a comment on YouTube, you messaged me about yes. taking one of these um, because I have my McHale bale spirit, which I love on the back of the tractor, but we have things coming up now that the other farm we want to take our bales back and forth from the other farm and I want to save fuel more than anything than having to travel back and forth and do it the way we're doing it at the minute. So if I can get away from using the back of the tractor and go more to the front I can put a bale trailer, bring the stuff home, do all without taking on and off the back of the tractor and that was kind of what I'm aiming towards. So Joe do you want to just explain to us how this machine actually works? I suppose the real benefit of this thing here is uh, it slices from the bottom up. That's number one, I suppose. And it's the first thing that people recognize that's different about every other slice that's on the market. When you're slicing from the bottom up, you don't have any trail in plastic, which is point number one. But the more important point is we slice first, we catch our plastic second. So every other machine that's on the market catches plastic first and shear second. You either yeah. catch the plastic or you don't. It's all really down to the operator. But this one, it kind of takes a little bit of the skill out of it. Yeah. Once it's in position, once it's been sliced upwards, it's always been pushed into the clamping area. The clamping area here, up front and back, uh, means when the bale is pushed up, the clamps close on the plastic both sides, it's caught. Compared to other ones I've seen, it's always had the little always hooks the yeah, at the if front. We do a combi cut as well, which is the same as virtually every other shear system as well. The clamp closes first, the shear grab comes down, the bale yeah. is caught or it's not caught. Yes. Down to the operator when it comes to that. This works well just on the machine, setting itself up to catch the plastic at all times. Before someone mentions it, it looks quite gaunt in here with the blades sticking up. The reason for that is just to show you guys the way it operates without having to look down on it. Um, what, this sitting the way it is now, you'd absolutely have to have it closed because that would be deadly never in the yard. Store, never store, and this would be for customers that we would already have uh, with bale slices. Never store your, your slice with the blade down. It sits on the tines, balances itself well, and your blade should always be up, up in here. the enclosed area. That's well, closed off. Yeah. Uh, Edwin, we're going to leave the switch and let you try it and see how you like it. Uh, we're interested in your feedback. We know you'll have comments coming in left, right, and centre on your uh, vlog. Uh, and we're open to any kind of trailer or, or, or effort that you want to make with it to see how it goes for you, uh, how it works for you, and uh, obviously um, you'll, you'll be able to give us that opinion over time. Well, in the pouring rain, I appreciate that, Joe. It is absolutely bucketing down rain here. Terrible bad day, but we make the best of it that we can. A bit of video that we can here now for now, but we pick it up as we go down the lane using this. So before we start this demo, I would like to say. I'm not receiving any money or any promotions or any of that crack for any of these items that I'm going to try and demo. I enjoy to test the machine out so I can give my honest opinion on it and I think it's more beneficial to you that way and it's more fun for me doing it that way too. So we just have this for a short term just to try it out and then we move on to the next one. So all I'm going to do is show you how it works 
and you can make your decision on it yourself. So the first thing you're gonna notice about it is, which probably the first impression I got is, it's big, isn't it? So this here weighs about 480 kilos, but no bale on the front of it. That is the weight of it. So there's a little bit of weight to it, but the size kind of deceives you. And the reason it deceives you is you have to remember this is a completely different machine than probably any other ones we were gonna test. Because this machine cuts from the bottom, this stays open all the time. Now, if this was a conventional shear grab, it would be closed. When you'd be leaving it sitting, it would be closed. And that would make it much smaller looking. Another thing it has here, just to explain to you before we use it, this clamping system is very different. Um, and all the other ones I've seen, now only the ones I've seen, in here you will have a place where the bale will rest up against and you'll have the little hooks that will come in here and grab it on a ram. And that will grab your plastic. Then you toss your bale out and your wrap is held in the middle. This machine, you don't have any of them hooks or anything. What you have is, you have this clamp, you can see here. The idea is when the bale is being cut from the bottom, cut completely up the middle in half. When it gets to the very top, you have to hold your torch service in uh, for an extra couple of seconds, and that will allow this here to close and clamp on the plastic and the net. I have to say, I've put in 10 bales with this so far, and not once has it let go of the plastic. It has held it every single time. This won't open until you let your blades down right to the very bottom and then it will just let go of the plastic and the plastic will fall on the ground and what causes that to close is in here you have a little lever here can you see that in the camera and this here pushes again this that there will engage a little servo that's there and that will knock off the oil flow to these and put the oil flow to your clamp up at the top and one other benefit that it has one thing i really like straight off the bat is it's painted in massy red. Don't know how the John Deere boys are like that one, but just had to throw that one into the pot. Now, there's our first bail in. Now, these cows are gonna be quite unhappy for a little while because their friends is after getting silage and they didn't. Now, you will notice a bit of silage left in the middle of the wrap. That has happened to me a few times. Um, I'm not sure what I'm doing exactly wrong. Joe was telling me here the last day and I must look it up again. He said there is a knack to stop that from happening. Just not positioning your bail just perfectly right and you're catching too much of the bail. That's probably down to human error, but I wanna show it to you anyway regardless because when you get something like this if you ever buy a thing like this it's probably what you're going to face in the first few times that you use it
Right, so there it is. All I have to do now is drop my blade down. You'll see that at the end of this video, just as I'm finishing off, and just push it back to the cattle. But you can see, it does exactly what it's supposed to do. And if you look, you can see the way it has grabbed the plastic and grabbed the net. Now there is silage in there, but if you look at where the silage is, and just trying to explain this as best I can, you'll see, I think it's more of an issue with the way our bales was, with the net being inside the silage as well as outside the silage. And there's not really much anything can do about that, but every bale that's been put in, it has never once let go of the plastic. It has hit the plastic every time. Weight-wise, well, as you can see in the back of the tractor, I have a bale on the bale splitter, just a counterweight. And you know what? It makes a big difference. I wouldn't use it without a counterweight on the back. It's from my tractor, which is not a terribly big tractor in any shape or form. I wouldn't be confident. You can do it. I've done it at home without anything on the back. It will work. But the back wheels will just be touching on the ground. And yeah, you need a weight on the back of it. Definitely something above 600 kilos on a tractor like that. Just to counterweight it. But a bale on the back, on the splitter like that, or a spike or something, that will perfectly today. Because this machine, I think, is going back in a day or two. So that's why I have my bale splitter back on and be weight taken off because that's what I'll be using when it's gone until whatever arrives next. But that's it, I hope you enjoyed that little bit of a demo. It's something we don't do too often. I do my best to show it as best I can, the goods and the bad, because as I said before, every machine, every machine has its flaws and them flaws are different for every individual farm. So for me, the real breakdown real quickly is the pluses, really well built really well built very very strong doesn't ever drop the plastic not in one bale that i put in is it ever let the plastic or the net fall through i like the way that it also lifts up rather than pushing down so if you had a, a diet feed or whatever any machine that the blades are pushing down is always putting pressure on the tines you could break a tine then by doing that and that could fall into your diet feeder they're all little bits of things another thing is it catches the plastic very high so if you're letting a bale fall in just like I opened here now into a diet feeder. No plastic's gonna get caught in the actual diet feeder itself. With other ones that have it here at the back in the center, the plastic's gonna be a little bit lower. So that's just something to consider if it's something you're gonna use it for in a diet feeder. The minuses for me would be it's quite heavy. Another thing for me would be my own setup, as I said before, not being fit to maneuver from side to side to push the bale over to the barriers. Not like the way it is here with the cattle now just sort lovely in in front of the cattle and now I'll drop that bit of plastic and I'll push it back with the blade and that's it all done. The blade is a great yoke as well and it's meant for that by the way to be used to push. It's very strong you're not going to break that. It's meant for pushing back silage and that it will do. Anyway folks thanks very much for watching I hope you enjoyed it maybe it's helpful for you in some way or other if you're looking at something like this and thanks very much to Killtech, the boys in Killtech for sending it out to us. Get, they got in contact with us through our YouTube channel and sent that out to us and I appreciate that, them trusting us with it and hopefully they're not too mad with me for some of the stuff that they said but I think they understood when they were dropping it off that I was going to give an honest opinion on it and they're up for that which you have to give them credit for. Anyway folks, thanks very much for watching until the next one, we'll talk to you again.